I thought mass delusions were a phenomenon mainly occurring in Germany with Merkel's self-destructive immigration policies and left-green fantasies of saving the world from conflict and pollution while happily sacrificing the core industries and competencies in Germany. Now with the coronavirus, which causes the lung disease COVID-19, the whole world seems to have turned off its brain. Yes, while there are several coronaviruses which are known to infect humans, COVID-19 is a new strain which swapped over from animals to humans. This fact of novelty, and yes, that it can cause fatalities, has created mass hysteria with severe restrictions to freedom of movement and panic shopping. The real disaster is the economy. Schools closing and kids staying at home, people not being able to go to work or spend money in shops and restaurants will lead to bankruptcies, then joblessness, then homelessness, as people can't pay their mortgages and rent anymore, which again causes shortage of tax income by the governments, which then may be in order to support the public to printing of money as we have no gold standard anyways and ultimately inflation. So the corona history may lead to a great depression similar to 90 years ago, which ultimately ended in World War II. Wow, that sounded really bad. I was just sitting at the abyss and taking a peek, but it doesn't have to get that far. Now, how serious is the coronavirus? Here's what the public information says. Let's start with influenza, so with the common flu. So let's look at the public health of England as an example, which every year files a report on influenza. So here, winter 2018 to 19, which also has summary statistics from the previous years. So here, figure 37, weekly number of all age deaths and contribution to influenza in red line. So what we see is the baseline, which is cyclic. So in winter, more people die than in summer just because the immune system is weaker, a lack of vitamin D and so on, and so more people die. Everything beyond the baseline, which is shown in red and the area in gray, is attributed to influenza. So on a weekly basis, on average, it's a high season, we have roughly 2000 deaths based on influenza. And if you integrate this area, the gray area, then every winter roughly, shown here, 20,000 people die because of influenza. And of course, the usual strong age dependence. So older people with weaker immune systems are prone to get sick more easily and die of influenza-caused diseases, for instance, pneumonia. Because everything is attributed to influenza, we have large numbers to deal with, and overall these numbers are rather accurate. Now, what about coronavirus cases? So official statistics shows we are still in the exponential rising phase, which is uh, common for an infectious disease, including influenza. And then what are the statistics saying? China, where it all started, 80,000 total cases, more than 3,000 deaths. Similarly, Italy is quite high. So the death rate is uh, numbers of deaths per the total number of cases, which in terms of China is 0.04, while the flu is estimated to be roughly 0.1%. In terms of a fraction, 0.001. We have a 40-fold higher rate of infection based on this estimate on China. Italy is also quite high, the death rate, also almost a factor 40 higher than the flu. However, now it varies quite drastically. Germany, the death rate in Germany would be 0.0025, which is just a factor two higher than influenza. And the US is somewhere in between these cases. However, there is a strong caveat with these numbers. First of all, these are small numbers overall and they are based on individual tests. So likely people with small symptoms um, are not even caught in these statistics. So the total number of cases might be much larger. It could be by an order of magnitude or even two orders of magnitude. But even if the death rate is in these countries is much higher, this can also be explained by the fact that it depends very much on the environment and the demographics. So in China, we have a high air pollution. And in Italy, there's a high number of smokers which are prone to get more easily sick. Furthermore, in particular in Italy, we have an, a very old population because this is very sensitive on the age. We have also a higher rate of infections and deaths in Italy. So there might be quite natural explanations why this rate is so much higher in China and Italy. And second, these are overall likely overestimates of the death rate. 
just because many cases don't go into the statistics. Now what else is here to say? There was recently a model provided by a British university which went into advising the UK government and I think the American one as well and there might be other models as well. So this is basically an influenza based model which was applied to COVID-19 in the um, UK. Um, however, the model was based on the early growth rate of the epidemic in Wuhan in China. As we just discussed, it's probably sort of the worst case scenario and this led to these very high infection rates. Two would correspond that one person infects two other people and we get exponential growth. Um, so this is estimated to be significantly higher than the flu, which is not much higher than one, just barely over one. Uh, this model was first fitted to uh, the observed cumulative number of deaths in the UK by uh, March 14th, which was a few days ago. The number of deaths is 71. A few days ago, it was maybe around 50. These are very small numbers. So partially um, things were taken from China to, um, to, as parameters for the model and other things were fitted to very small numbers in the UK. And what does the model then produce? It predicted approximately a half a million deaths in Great Britain and 2.2 million in the US. That's why Boris Johnson was so freaked out a few days ago when I did the other video where I analyzed him going to the public and, and speaking about um, the scenario. However, as I said, these parameters are taken from worst case scenario from Wuhan and fitted to very small numbers of data in the UK. So it's likely to be um, very inaccurate, this model. So keep in mind that the total number of deaths in each country and even the total overall is very small compared to the number of 20,000 a year in the UK alone per flu season. And by producing alarming headlines and colorful red maps, it all looks horrific. However, one could also plot a map for the flu and it would look equally bad or even worse or based on data how good a product sells around the world. Such maps are very selective and based on their presentation can have a huge impact on people's perception, leading to mass hysteria and panic shopping. Okay, with this I wish you very well and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.